Well, it says that we're live, so I'm going to assume that we are already going. So, welcome, people of the internet, to uh, episode one of the Symphogear podcast, the podcast where we talk about Symphogear season five. At least I think that's what we talk about. If not, I watched the wrong anime. Uh, I watched Fruits Basket. I don't know what you watched. Oh, I watched Twin Tails. What are Twin Tails? We'll get into that soon. So, for those who are new to my podcast, I am joined, as always, by the great and wonderful Sea Tactics. Hi. Um, a fun fact about Sea Tactics, he once had juggled four bean burritos while standing on top of the U.S. Capitol building. This is not true. This this uh, was, a, was a sighting from an unidentified object. Um, I, I, I didn't do this. All right, that, so we have confirmation that that did, in fact, happen. Uh, no, I literally just said the opposite. Exactly, but we're talking about some folk gear where logic makes no sense, and you have to always expect the unexpected. Right, logic making no sense. You can only say that sentence when we're talking about Simpho Gear. Yeah, so we got into uh, Season 5, Episode 1. It had been a while for, since Season 4, two years for people who watch it as it aired, but for us, like, a month because we caught up recently. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, Simpho Gear is, pro- at least for me, is probably the most pure fun anime that I have ever seen. I don't think I've seen an anime ever quite like Simpho Gear. I mean, I guess Kill La Kill... It, it like comes in, but at, at some points, I would make you can make an argument that Sympho Gear goes a little bit more crazy than Kill La Kill. It's like if the whole purpose of Sympho Gear is to be crazy. Well, Kill La Kill has a point to its craziness. Right, right. So that's why I say that's why I put them in different categories. Kill La Kill has more memorable craziness. Sympho Gear is like you, you may forget a lot of it, besides like you know four or five crazy parts. Except for like Kibiki suplexing a tank, that's pretty hard to forget. Oh. Not only suplexing, but parring the tank rounds with martial arts. Yes, with her fist. Just punch tank round, goes beside her, explodes. Or how she, uh, what was it? She punched the hole in the mountain to make it now the third largest mountain in the world. Uh, That was season three. In season five, uh, the start was less completely insane, which, considering how insane this episode was, that's a strange thing to say. I should probably read out the synopsis for the episode. Oh, yes, read the synopsis. Sympho Gear XV, a.k.a. 5 for people who don't live in Roman numeral land anymore. From the horizon of mankind's history. I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice long title for an episode that I don't quite understand. A strange, mysterious person activates something on the moon. Then we see... All the gang and a submarine in Antarctica, which is where the coffin is, which holds something very important to the plot. Turns out the coffin can fight. Who knew coffins could fight? It's also really big. And they use friendship to defeat it. Inside, there is a mummy, which without a doubt will probably turn into a super thick anime girl. Or Loli, knowing some folk here. Oh, God. Can we just... So... I guess the first thing we have to talk about is I called it. I said there's something that's they're going to do something with the moon for this season. I just had a feeling because they, they've been referencing it ever since the ending of season one. It's always been there. And, yeah, now, like the, and now apparently that guy did something with the moon. I was going to go rewatch that scene, but then I got distracted by C. So he like activated something and he was like, I'm sorry, Fine. Fine, of course, being once again, reference to and she's been dead for like four seasons i wonder if she'll come back for this season i you know what i kind of want her to i feel like like a lot of shows you get annoyed oh they just bring a character back that takes away the death but the, at the same time this is simple gear so it almost makes it better if the character comes exactly. back like you don't need logic when you just bring a uh, character back it's like okay we want them back they're gonna do cool things they're going to like blow up mars yeah, pretty much. Or, in Fine's case, try to make the moon collide with planet Earth. Yes. Yeah, so no, they'll use the moon to blow up Mars. It's so it's so, it's it's just insane. Yes. Uh. So yeah. Uh. I mean, what do you think he activated? Well, yeah, I don't know, and I think he was connected to the Illuminati from the last season somehow. Though we're not quite sure how. 
what is it the bavarian illuminati or whatever they call it yeah it's called the illuminati because i can't pronounce the other name yeah they're, they're definitely just the illuminati yeah it's like of course let's throw it in the illuminati because this is simple gear yeah it's simple gear which is like it's funny it's like it's like if you if you explain Sinfo Gear and plot alone, they'll be like, "That's crazy! How can it get more insane?" And then you're like, "Well, the Illuminati's also in it." <laughs> yeah, like the Illuminati are the villains for probably one two seasons. It, it's just insane. It's like, what anime can get away with the stuff that Sinfo Gear gets away with? Exactly. Well, that's why they keep getting more and more crazy. So like, you're they have like a normal level of crazy, and you're like, "Oh, that makes perfect sense." Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, yeah. So so they're in Antarctica. To fight the big coffin thing. Yeah. Oh, before we get to that, we need to talk about the transformation sequence with Hibiki and just how cool that was. Oh, yeah. Well, just in general, the production quality is, is phenomenal for this season. Yeah, it is. Like, there's, like, so many great, like, frames and clips or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, with, with all the action, with Hibiki's transformation just kickstarting it, and then they, like, fly and shoot missiles and drill the... Uh, casket with two people right yeah uh i mean every season there's always a tangible upgrade upgrade in quality and every two seasons of sh- so there's like a big jump like the first two seasons um have they're they're like they're at a baseline i think season two is like the best that season one looked like it's right. the same kind of style but it's the best version of season one and then season three through four had like a big jump it got a little bit more darker more cinematic more yuri uh and then this this has to be the biggest jump uh i mean the helicopters they were riding in they were kind of reused cg models but like other than that yeah that's only like it's so much in the background it's not the focus it doesn't matter if it's reused right yeah yeah and i mean this this uh, the first thing we see is the the guy you know who had he, I guess he got stabbed in the heart or something like that, just yeah. dragging the... a bunch of blood behind him, and I mean th- this this season like I like I thought it would be would be the most darkest and and more uh, uh more cinematic than any of the others. Yeah, and was this uh, probably going to be in the final season of it? I think that was confirmed, though I could not read the tweets as it was Japanese. So it makes sense for this like to be the darkest for the big finale of the series. Neko Wolf says, more Yuri, to which, yes. For sure. Yes. I think, what, what, what well, season was it? Was it season three when they were like, yeah, these, these girls are going to hold hands and kiss one of these days? Well, yeah, well, this is later on in the episode, but we got Hibiki and uh, Miyu, or Miku. whatever, and Miku. Hibiki's I get wife. The, I get the lollies mixed up sometimes. But yeah, we got them in the Ferris wheel, so like, yes, they're definitely hinting at stuff. Yeah, yeah. And Miku and uh, Hibiki have been something that's been hinted at for ever since season two, pretty much. Well, season one, they were kind of friends, but... Well, yeah, I think the creator even said that he thought of them as like a, a married couple. Yeah, I mean, we have a joke where when we watch it, I, I, I'm all the time, when, when I see Miko, I'm like, hey, that's Hibiki's wife. <laughs> yeah, and it, we also have uh, alternate names for half the characters since we never bothered to learn their names. Yeah, Death Lolly Green, Chainsaw oh, no, we, Lolly. We have Chainsaw Lolly and Death Lolly, so. She, uh, also oh. Dark Magician Girl. That's, yeah, that's also name uh, for. Alchemist Lolly is the Alchemist Lolly, so I don't even know her name. Wait, Alchemist Lolly? Yeah, Alchemist? the one with the computers. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember her in, what was it, the third season where she transformed into an adult and grabbed her boob? That was weird. Gee, it's a figure, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Uh, and then, oh, they, there's like a throwback, the, a little bit of continuity in this episode. They also show okay. the, the broken robot Lolly. Oh, yeah, that, well, that was later on, so... Uh, Let's talk about the first battle a little bit more. So, yeah, something interesting is just how Hibiki and Maria were doing like a combined attack, and I don't think we'd ever seen that before. Yeah, yeah. We haven't seen many combined like father son Kamehameha moments in the series. Yeah, it, the drills just made it feel like this has to be out of Garen Hagen. Like, it would be something that you'd see Simon and Kamina do. Oh, yeah, yeah. And especially at the end, you know? You know, with the yeah. whole piercing the heavens thing. Exactly. Like, 
the creators of this have to be fans of Gurren Lagann. The creators of this have to be on some kind of... I don't even know what drug. Like I, I was like, they have to be on speed, but then I thought, nah, they're not on speed for this. <laughs> yeah, I'm just half... I have to imagine what's the process of like bringing one of these action scenes to life. Like how do they come up with the things and say, okay, Hibiki will use her special attack. Then Tsubasa will follow up with missiles and then Hibiki will suplex the coffin and then like fire and then try and finish it off there. Yeah. I, uh, it's actually pretty fascinating that they've, yeah, haven't used a lot of combo attacks in the series just regularly, regularly because it is kind of fascinating to see how these how two different characters will work together. Right, and yeah, they had that last season. There a couple episodes like the, that they focus on different pairs and how they teamed up. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, what was it? The first season was uh, was it? It was uh, oh god, Subasa and Hibiki, and Chris was in yeah. there. I think Chris, Chris was, was just trying to. Her. I think I think Chris was her thing when she's just trying to fit in. Yeah. And I can't well, like, remember the rest of well, well, actually, season three was Maria and Tsubasa. They yeah, because they, they teamed up. Yeah, and now they're they're married, as well. <laughs> yes, they're the other married couple that's yeah. in just in our head canon. The one that definitely should be, without a doubt, in my opinion. I'm I'm just saying. Yeah, and then you have the the lollies who they do things. Oh yeah, Matt. I'm I'm very surprised that. These these lollies have stuck around in this show. Yes, yeah, so they're the best lollies, though. They goddamn lollies. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> exactly. That's how you know that she likes them. Uh, so so there's a flashback where yeah, where you mentioned earlier they were in the uh the carousel thing. But, oh yeah, uh, the school. Uh, there's this funny part where Hibiki punches Miku. And then oh. the yacht explodes in the background. Yes. Yeah, we were watching that with my brother. He made a comment. Wait, did he punch her so, so hard a yacht exploded? Yeah. <laughs> makes sense. And then, and then it was like a delayed reaction. Miku was like, <laughs> noticed the explosion. And then she was like, oh, ow. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, this is a problem. We probably need to do something. And then apparently that was like a research lab on a cruise ship for whatever reason. Neko Wolf says, uh, I wonder how it will end. White hair girl eating potatoes is what I've seen from Symphogear. I thought Symphogear was like Ori Twin Tail. Yeah, uh, this is like uh, Twin Tails, but more focused on the craziness and uh, more production values. It's like Twin Tails is like super serious. Or not, not Twin Tails. Symphogear is like super serious, uh, but, in, but it goes in more of a, I don't want to say a campy kind of direction, but a more. Like it, like it's very self-aware and yeah, yeah. It's like the whole focus is being as fun as possible with the action. Yeah, it's basically just watch a bunch of girls fight. Yeah, or it's like a bunch of uh, AMVs that are ac the actual battles. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. There's, there's, I forgot that there's the singing aspect of it. Yeah, like every battle is an action AMV, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Uh. So yeah, the the lot the yacht explodes. Oh, I forgot what happens on the yacht. What happens there? Uh, that was a like a research facility for a song that they kept hidden and disguised as a cruise ship. So no, that was because they were trying to get into the uh, robot lolly, but they triggered like a uh, tamper detection explosion. Well, I mean that's what happens when you try to get inside robot lollies. You trigger the tamper protection, and then they, the wee -hoo, wee -hoo, they come for you. You gotta run. <laughs> No, they just blow up your ship. Oh, well. Wait, uh, is it is it just a physical ship or is it the romantic ship that they blew up there too? I'm not even sure. <laughs> but yeah, before that, though, they spent a lot of time just on the school in ordinary life, which seemed kind of strange because of the focus of the episode. Yeah, I expected like, like splitting the moon in half in episode one. Like, like that was like the 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 height of what I was expecting. In this first right. episode, because season four is like opening episode was freaking insane. <laughs> yes, uh, if you have not seen Sympho Gear, just go watch the first episode of season four. Yeah, you will understand Sympho Gear at that point. Yes, like I, I 
they kind of ramped up with each of the first episodes. Like the first episode in season one was was pretty freaking awesome. And yeah, then, I was like, this, okay, this is cool. And the second episode was awesome as well. Second episode mm-hmm. had like all the action and stuff going on. And then uh, season two had the I, death lollies showing up. Causing oh yeah, you no, know, like and then Maria attacked the uh, Subasa's concert. Yeah, yeah, and uh, then season three was the the mountain the, the spaceship of the mountain and uh the destroying the forest and uh nearly destroying the building but he stopped the ship so mm-hmm. uh and then season four was parring tank shells and splitting a ship in half and um jumping off helicopters and riding missiles and it just kept going <laughs> Oh, and then like uh, dodging a missile fired out a helicopter by like opening yeah. the doors and letting the missile oh, pass through it. Yeah, the lollies did something cool. <laughs> it's like they couldn't fight because of a plot reason that I don't remember the details of, but they just like open it and they stopped it like, we're so cool now. <laughs> you can't even argue with them because it's cool to stop a missile by like just having it go through your helicopter. Yeah, it was so, it was just a perfect moment. That I don't know who directed that first episode, but they were like, what can we do that is just everything just happens all at once and you're overwhelmed in the best way? Yes. And then this was more normal, but still tons of action. Yeah. So what we were talking about before is like they spent like five or six minutes just on a normal slice of life. And I feel like that's one of the focuses they want to do with the season is show the characters kind of in an ordinary life and then contrasting that with them being magical girls and saving the world. Mm-hmm. I I was just I don't know. Like there was a bunch of crazy stuff in this episode, don't get me wrong. The idea of them fighting a moving mobile coffin uh, yeah. was from like prehistoric eras was or whatever it was was insane. Like well, a lot of the things like if you think about it are freaking insane. For one, they're fighting the Illuminati, they're fighting a giant moving coffin, the in moons Antarctica. involved in Antarctica. The, the how it wakes up is it shoots a giant red beam into the sky right and then it ended up like making it negative 5100 degrees to freeze them which they got out of anyways but still like that makes no sense from a physics perspective wouldn't that negative 5100 degrees wouldn't that be like that's not you're not supposed to have those temperatures that's physically impossible Unless you get into really weird physics. That would be like the that's like the heat death of the universe cold right there. No, that's like forty eight hundred degrees colder than that. Whoa. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> exactly. Well they you made a comment, like I think it was the alchemy law he's saying interference laws of the universe via out, outer physics, whatever that means. <laughs> like I don't know if there's like a translation thing that they missed or if it was supposed to make no sense. I you, I don't I'm okay with it just for the simple fact that how could you explain something like that? Exactly, it's like Kiriki says she needs an explanation for the explanation. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> uh, we uh, get we get a couple new lollies and then a, a another uh, adult woman. Oh, yes, and I was rewatching this, and I noticed something about the adult woman. Uh, she has a Nevada license plate, so she's from America. Oh, is she going to speak English? Oh, I that, hope so. I love that in season one, when they all speak to English, and they were just the thickest accents. That was great. I don't think I remember that one, but actually, maybe I do. Neko Wolf asks, is there any other shows like Sinfo Gear? Uh, there... Kill a Kill? <laughs> Uh, there's Kill a Kill, Twin Tails, Show by Rock, and then combine them all together, or at least combine the right aspects of them together. Power Rangers? Yes, yeah, definitely Power Rangers. <laughs> like, there's a, I feel like there's a lot of Super Sentai and Power Rangers stuff that's going on with Sinfo Gear. Yes. Just with the color coding and all that. If we might, there are some things in here that remind me of a Sara Zanmai, or however you pronounce it. Oh, God, what is but, that? That's a really weird anime from last season with the caros and frogs and otters. I'm sure there's more shows like Sinfo Gear that uh there's that uh what was that other one? That's uh, it's like magical girl uh Nenoha or something like that. Oh, Nanoha? Yeah. 
Yeah, Lyrical Nana, huh? Yeah, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, I've heard that one gets compared a lot to Simpho Gear. I can see that based on what I know. Maybe we should go watch it. That's what we're going to do afterwards. <laughs> oh, there's also uh, Strike Witches, which I someone mentioned that in my Twin Tails video, saying that there are some similarities. And I tried the first episode, I was like, yeah, I can see the similarities. Um, I mean, Dragon Ball Z. That's that's one that's an obvious comparison to Sinfo Gear. Dragon Sinfo Gear Hibiki is Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> oh, she's also Gurren Lagann and sometimes JoJo. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she is. Twin Twelves felt more like Power Rangers when I watched it, but damn Dark Grossbert reminded me of One Thousand Years I'm Free. I have no, I don't understand any of that reference at the end. Ah, uh, Dark Grossbert, such a great character. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, we were talking about the new characters that were introduced. Yeah, so there's the two lollies, and the first thing you see of the one girl, she's using her hand as a as a telescope. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she did. Which was so simple gear. Like, what? Why? Okay, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and then they also were revealing that they saw Adam as their director, so like they kind of worked for him in the past, but their goal is to obtain the coffin's power, not to destroy it like Adam wanted to do. I also remember, uh, I just remembered this, it's not, it's not on you know topic of what you just said, but uh, when they were showing uh, the the screen with a bunch of the scenes from like the last seasons or last season or whatever, uh -huh. And they had like the naked guy on there, and then they had just a random. You brought it up. They had a random picture oh, yes. of a car crashed into a pole. <laughs> I think that was relevant, but still, just the fact that they would feel fit. Here's something we need to put here. <laughs> it's just funny things. Remember, remember when season four? Because season four is now officially on Crunchyroll, but no, we uh we watched the unofficial version. Oh yes, with the fan subs. Yeah, the fan subs had like when they were watching from their like high tech monitor room, the fan subs were on their monitors. Yes, for for the songs, like they had the songs on the on our screen, but also on the character screens. Which yeah, so they had their own lyrics translated into Romanji or whatever it is. Yeah. Oh no, that was the English translation, but still. Oh. Yeah, that was English because that's how we knew they were saying. They even had the color. Yeah, I like those those fan sub people. They're good. <laughs> I kind of want. I kind of hope they also do this one, so I can watch their version too. Oh yeah, for sure. I bet. I bet. I bet theirs would be awesome. I just. <laughs> I. This is, I feel like fan subbing the show. Like those groups are having so much fun. Yeah, like Simpho Gear is crazy enough as it is, so they can just like add their own little tweaks that they find amusing, or just like go above and beyond like that. Uh, so yeah, uh, we got a bunch of new lollies. The one girl's from Nevada. She spins the yeah. car like crazy. Like, like it makes multiple, uh, revolutions. Yeah. It's like how you have a character like needing to stop right away or get around something, but there's no reason for her to do that. She just did because this is Simpho gear. She's just like, I watch fast and furious. I wonder how many donuts I can pull off in a span of one second. And it's she did probably three. <laughs> it's probably rental car she decided screw it i'm doing whatever i want with this car and yeah she does seem like a very like like the, the way the, the way that car looked i was like that's such an american like looking car i don't remember what that car is called but it's like a very iconic american vehicle i believe uh oh, from okay. like the 60s and 50s i'm pretty sure and uh yeah. I, I was like man they're I don't know what's up with this girl, but I want to see. I want to see more of her. Plus, since she's from Nevada, Area Fifty One. There you go. Ooh. Yeah, you make it more crazy. Thing, they have a thing about like the United States and Japan doing stuff with the moon, so maybe there's a connection there. Oh, that yeah. would be interesting. Didn't they announce like uh, America, the U.S. and uh, Japan had like a partnership to like do something for the moon or whatever? Yeah, and I don't think they really said the details of it, but I, the moon is definitely very important this season. And I called it. Yes, he is always right. <laughs> I'm so glad I called it. I'm so happy. <laughs> I wanted to punch the moon back into orbit. They probably will. Hibiki needs to just be like, I gotta do this. Miku, I may not come back alive. And Miku's like, Hibiki! 
No Miku comes with her to help her punch the moon. That's the oh, finale. No Miku's like, Hibiki, my my son. <laughs> my shining didn't star. She said that last season, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I got that as the screenshot. Oh man, this it's beautiful. Um yeah. well, Oh, we have the characters like they are stuck by the thing that the coffin did, freezing them at negative 1,500 degrees, yeah. or 5,100 degrees. But then uh, I ended up not really catching what had happened before to get them out. But then I saw like some of these random guys were like trying to distract the giant coffin thing with some flares. That got the monster's attention, and then Hibiki hurt them in trouble. So that got her. So she was like broke herself out along with the other Simpa Gear people. <laughs> I just like they're like we got to get its attention. Hurry, shoot flares. <laughs> 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 it's like it, it, it's what it, how would they think that would work I mean if, you saw, if I saw someone shooting a flare that would get... but I don't know how did they how did it go through their minds of like maybe if we like shoot a flare it'll distract it when they don't know nothing about it oh, what other choice do they have I mean, it's like t- you come up with the first idea you have, you try it. You somebody the else, best. you get somebody else to hit it really hard. <laughs> clone Hibiki and get a clone oh. of Hibiki and make Hibiki punch it. No, wasn't the commander about to jo- uh, join the fight too? Oh like yeah, he was, he was going to go outside. He was going to end it quickly because he had extra under. Be oh. okay. Man, I-, I love him. I love him. He's got his tie in his pocket. He's so cool. And what was it? Season four when they were training. He just owned them all like yeah. easily. I'm like, why aren't you doing all of this? Well, they, wasn't the other computer guy like he was like a ninja and everything? So like, yeah, why did... he did the whole log thing from Naruto? <laughs> exactly. And like, it was back in season one or two that uh, the commander was training them through a, a Rocky montage, which I think was actually a cover of one of the Rocky songs that they did. Oh yeah, yeah, and they all drank eggs. <laughs> and, exactly. And Chris didn't like it. <laughs> And then there's something about Russia uh, cooking being deep, but maybe that was the, yeah, another season. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Russian cooking was, was apparently very deep. It was like beef stroganoff or whatever they were fixing. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Is beef stroganoff a, a Russian thing? This sounds Russian. Not. Stroganoff. Let's go with it. It's Russian. Someone in the chat can correct us if we're wrong. Yeah, so, someone has to be Russian watching Zinfo here. Yeah, exactly. Maybe they'll have, like, this episode two will take place in Russia. I mean, it takes place in the first one takes place in Antarctica. Exactly. So where else can you go from Antarctica? You know, it's funny. You, you bring that up. Uh, I read something on the Internet like somebody wanted the series to be rebooted so they can follow the source material more closely. The and, source material. Uh, yeah. Apparently, like there's like a game or something like that. And, uh, you know, I'm just saying um, if they do decide to just do another version of Sympho Gear after this. I would watch it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'll watch pretty much anything Simpho Gear. <laughs> like, unless it's terrible, unless they're, like, making out in the next episode, then, I, you know, other than that, there's pretty much nothing this show can do. Exa- well, it depends on who's making out, too, how, are, how we would view that. Because, I, I, yeah, that's, that is also true. Uh, Miku and Hibiki, like, them making out, I think, is kind of normal. That's, that, that's fine. Mario and Tsubasa let it slide you know give me the footage later i'll review it <laughs> i'm sure you will i think we need to tell Hosky things no don't uh so, so uh yeah there's a couple other things that i noticed too like oh yeah we have the alchemist dolly being able to enhance hibiki's uh, power like her fist so she oh, could yeah. punch the things that are attacking her yeah and she even made a comment when she was told that, say, I don't understand a word that you're saying, but okay, I'll punch it. <laughs> I love it. They broke like a jewel on the coffin or something like that. And that was. Really yeah. Funny. I wonder if that means anything or is that just something that says, okay, this looks cool. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, well, and then the coffin like knocked Hibiki into the water and like was trying to drown her. Yeah. And she, she was weakened too because she couldn't sing underwater, but she was still okay because she had a song in her heart yes she goes i have a song in my there no she says there's a song in my heart and just like breaks the logic of her own world not only just our world hers as well and just 
gets she's just free she's good oh, that was actually a callback to the flashback because remember the teacher was saying like you sang so well because you have a song in your heart so i feel like that's like there's a connection there i like to think that there's a little tiny violin the world's tiniest violin like in spongebob well didn't inside she have of her like, heart didn't she have like some of the symphony embedded inside her heart so yeah she had like pieces of it yeah, so I mean, it was like the physically being in her heart and metaphorically in her heart are like intertwining. Yeah, and there's that also makes sense. A, and there's also a violin in there too. I mean, probably, but that's beside the point. Mr. Krabs is playing the world's tiniest violin in there, <laughs> and that's giving Hibiki the power to destroy the uh, coffin. Exactly, exactly. Hibiki's the best. <laughs> yes, and then they all went together with a combined super mega attack, like blasted into the yeah. sky, and. Then they- they use like a like, then all their armor came off, so all they had is like those really tight undersuits or whatever. It reminded me of the combined attack in Twin Tails. I don't think we got to that part. We got to that was like episode eight when they were fighting Dark Rasper. I, do, I why do I not remember this? <laughs> it's how they destroyed the Dark Rasper's clothes. Why do I not remember this? <laughs> that was right before the Yuri. <laughs> Yuri? There's Yuri? Kind of. Like, okay, so... Why do I not to... remember any of this? My brain's just malfunctioning right now. Uh, Simply has that effect on people. Yeah, so uh, they, they blow up the coffin thing. They destroy yeah, and... it. And then inside there's a mummy. Yes, they think the custodian is what they called it. Yeah, she's going to be Which... hot. Totally hot. You know she is. Yeah, I guess we're learning about like what those are. They seem like to be some sort of god, maybe. So, based on what we saw this season and last season, hot god. <laughs> That's a mummy. Yeah, hot, a hot mummy. I definitely need to tell Sotsky. They're gonna put it in water and salt, and it's just gonna, <laughs> it's gonna go back to normal. <laughs> it's... You, uh, uh, you have no idea. Like all she needed, like she's gonna wake up. She's gonna be like, "Oh, I just got a dry throat, and suddenly I'm in this big thing, and I can't move." And somebody put a thing over, like a towel over my head. To hell. Exactly. Uh, she needs to be brought back, but only with the power of country music. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine stuff like you with country music? <laughs> I want to see that now. Oh my God! Someone, please, someone, please, whoever you are, I don't know who you are, make a video where you take out the normal music of Symphony Gear and you have them sing country music, like country hits. No, I'm just waiting for someone to like cover one of Symphony Gear songs and. <laughs> they just, they just Hibiki just like on the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Uh, that that would be a fun video. And then Amari is like, only in America. <laughs> no, well, the person who is uh, driving their car in Nevada is having that plane. That's <laughs> your fan theory. No, she's she listens to like hip hop. Uh, but maybe the lollies in Antarctica listen to country. Oh. No, the lollies in Antarctica would li- is listen listens to like uh like classic rock. Uh, no, I feel like that's when they go to Russia, they'll get the classic rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would make sense, yeah. Someone's <laughs> got to, like, do the Vietnam thing. <gasps> Who could do the Vietnam thing? It's just the CCR. Just... Oh, Chris! Chris! Yes! Chris! Chris's music is CCR. It's just Creedence Cre- Clearwater Revival. I don't know what that is, but okay. Cre- well, she, she's she got all the guns, and, you know, like... America had all the guns and they still lost. Yeah, so we, so what you're saying is we need more explosions. Yeah. Speaking of which, there wasn't much Chris in this episode. I was sad. Oh, well, didn't Chris, like, after Hibiki slammed the thing into the ground, like, follow up with missiles? Yeah, she did. And then uh, wait, when Hibiki got broke out, then that's Chris was behind her there, too, I thought. By the way, comedic gold, when the coffin hits, uh, was it Hibiki and Tsubasa, and they just face plant oh. and like slide across the snow and ice. I thought that was a Hibiki and a Maria. Oh, uh, it might have been them. Yeah, because yeah, that was after they did the double drill yeah, attack. Yeah, that's yeah, when they did that. Uh, that was funny. Because they I were like, like, are you guys all right? 
<laughs> like, ah, uh, that, well, and yeah, there are a lot of, like, like brutal hits that the characters took just throughout this episode. Yeah, yeah. Like being slammed into the ground and the water into the ice. It's a good thing Simple Gears are durable and give them magic powers. Well, no, it's the songs inside of their hearts. Yes, but the songs give them the Simple Gear, so it's the same thing. So, like, if I'm in this world, all I got to do is start singing, like, in Latin. Oh, no, you need Simple Gear first. But if I, but if I like, is there, like, a tryout period where if, like, I'm really good at singing in Latin? I, you can only if you wear a tie in your pocket. Fuck. I don't have a tie. <laughs> I kind of want to, if I can quit the clothes guard, I want to cosplay as him uh, when I go to A-Fest next month. Oh man, I hope people know immediately who you're cosplaying as. Yeah, I mean, I'm not quite muscular enough, but I think I can pull it off. Oh, just wear like a, a muscle shirt. I don't have one of those. And they're probably but, cheap. But then I need like a red dress shirt over it, so. Yeah, and slacks. Yeah, I have slacks. I had those from my Okabe cosplay last year. It's perfect. All right, so I need I need to go get a red dress shirt and tie. Then I'll be back later. Goodbye. You're just you'll just show up at the show or the 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 con just like really just you're just nice nicely dressed. But it's the tie. It's the tie that makes yeah, it like obvious. Think, you're thinking, oh, this person is dressed kind of nice for an anime convention, and when it's uh, Texas in the middle of the summer, wait, why is his tie tucked into his pocket? <laughs> It's like just so enough to be like you can see him normally. He's like, okay, normal clothes. Wait, this is actually cosplay. What you should do is dress up as one of the girls in their Simpho gears. I don't think I can pull that off. I don't think many people could pull that off. I, mean, I could possibly pull a Soji from Twin Tails, not as Tail Red. Yeah. That's probably really easy, actually. Yeah, that's, that's, but like. It's much like the director guy. Yeah, it would be fun to like be Soji and then have someone with me to be Tail Red, but I don't know of any, anyone who is like who could pull that off and who would be willing to do that. Oh yeah, you just you just get Astro to do dress up as a Bicky. That's a good thing he's not watching this. Just tell him, just be like, just make him get breast implants. He'll be fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we're gonna have a family member dressed up as Hibiki, I'd ask my sister. Yeah, but that's not as fun. <laughs> okay. That's, so that's, that's too normal. We gotta get weird. <laughs> okay, so beyond uh, making my family go with my surgery for play, is it, do you have any other thoughts on the episode? Uh, uh, I wonder what the new lollies are gonna do if they're gonna if they're actually lollies. Because we we did they were prone so they oh didn't, yeah they didn't really stand up much and yeah and the they're girl, like, I wonder what the girl is gonna do yeah it's like they want to use the custodian's power for something so I think we'll definitely learn a lot more about what's going on soon she wore a lot of tight clothes the first shot you see of her is a shot from the the uh, where the the gas pedals and stuff are. And the oh, vehicle, yeah. and it's like, all right, now I know she has thighs. Cool, thanks. And then Simple the second, and then the second one is like, uh, um, like a like a Michael Bay from like t pointing the camera camera upward at them. And it's like, all right, now I know she has boobs. Cool. Whoever directed this had to have fun doing it. It was Michael Bay. It's got to be Michael Bay. Yeah. You know, Michael Bay is uh, secretly the same guy who directed this. He just didn't want people to know. <laughs> my uh, my personal theory is that Michael Bay like watched an idol anime a while back. He decided he wanted to make his own anime, but to do it his way. And then Sympho Gear happened. Sympho Gear out transformer Transformers, and he's like, fuck, I'm going to destroy it from the inside. <laughs> and he goes, okay. And then they're saying, oh, people like this. Okay, let's get... <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. This is way this is way better than Transformers, but exactly. I, I don't think is, that's saying much anyway. It's like most things are better my, than Transformers. This is Michael Bay's greatest work ever. Oh, for sure. And if it's not Michael Bay, it's Michael Bay. It's exactly. It's, it's got to be. Uh. So, so what, I, what do you think is gonna happen in the next episode? 
Um, I think they'll go back to the school for a little bit. It'll be calm for a little bit. Then we'll go back to the uh, the Illuminati who will have the Guardian and they'll like, try to use their power. They will summon a new type of noise that the characters will have to face. Uh, we'll have the Death Lily get her song uh, premiered when she kills things with a giant scythe and stuff. All right. And we'll, and yeah, that's about all I got. I'm going to go ahead and say that chick's from Area 51 and she's an alien. I believe it. I I want it to happen. I want it to be like, yeah, I'm from a, I'm a, from a different planet. I'm from oh god. If she says Pluto, it would or no Planet X. If she says she's from Planet X, oh my god. If Planet X is actually just in this anime in general, this anime is just beautiful. Oh, and something else. We also had like Donald Trump show up shaking hands with the Japanese president, which I thought was. Oh yeah, yeah. This is the white guy with blonde hair. Yeah, like, I'm always amused by when they have Trump in the anime. Yeah, and Iyashiki did it. Exactly. He's just absurd enough to fit anime like this. Oh, there's another anime where he was in it, too, recently. Inferno like, Cop? No, it was like a... just They had like a screenshot of him, I think. And it was like he was laughing or something. <laughs> okay. I have no idea. Well, how old is Trump these days? 90? 92? Uh, I think 71, 72. Jesus. He's not... If they put Trump in this anime, like actual Trump, and like get him to like... If they get like really bad sound... If if they they fight Trump in this anime... (sighs) And Trump's a Sinfuga user somehow. Oh! He's like, this was so neutral! (laughs) And he's just... It's just um, just like rock guitars and just like And then he has like a metal country music playing. That would be uh, Trump. I'm a little bit country. <laughs> well, I'm a little bit rock and roll. Uh, I, I would pay to see that. Yes. So so everyone thank you for checking out our sim figure podcast i hope you are enjoying the show as much as we are uh see for those who don't not know you where can they find you uh they can find me right here uh another place they can find me is over there and uh i have a second channel called bento i also have a main channel called c tactics on bento every friday we talk about fruits basket me and rising that's it's a great show Lots of people like it. Lots of people enjoy it. Some of you may have come over from there. Uh, yeah, this is a very different show than Fruits Basket. That's true. It's very different. Um, although we did contemplate actually just talking about more Fruits Basket as well. <laughs> it's, yes. it's good. <laughs> uh, Fruits Basket, great show. Highly recommend. You should go check it out. Uh, main channel, I do all kinds of stuff like JoJo, Hunter x Hunter, some Fate stuff every now and again. Uh, probably maybe doing One Piece soon. I also have a series called OV Awful and OV Awesome where I talk about a bunch of old OVAs. That's Patreon supported. Uh, Patreon supported rather. Uh, oh God, what else? King of Anime Podcast. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, yeah. We'll be talking a lot about the seasonal animes. Got one planned for Lord L. Meloy. It's, that's a fate thing. Oh, that one. Yeah. And, uh, what else? God. The, the, uh, incest anime with the mother and son. I'm gonna talk about that in a funny video. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Yeah, and I am here on this channel where I talk about cucumber things. Yes. Oh, and to answer Neka Wolf's question, yes, I have seen Maha's Shoujo's site. I might be doing a video on that before too long. I'm, I have decided that my, all, all of my, I'm just going to delete all my channels and I'm going to move to Japan and become a voice actor so that I can be in Sympho Gear 2. Well, didn't you, or did you hear that the person who plays Hibiki is making her Wait, say it again? The person who uh, voices Hibiki is like d- doing character designs and stuff for her own anime. Oh, Aoi Yuki? Yeah. Oh, she's so cool. Yes. She's, also go- really, she's also really freaking good at voice acting. She is. Like, I, th- I would be surprised if they could dub this one as good as the sub is. Uh, Plus all the music. I would love it if they dubbed it and they actually, like, the, they got, they, they dubbed the music as well. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that would be a big undertaking. If they could, that would be awesome, but... 
They'd have to get really talented people. It wouldn't have to be like it. It'd have to be like trained vocalists for sure. Yeah, like there are some uh, uh, English the voice actors who are pretty good singers, but to be at the level of Symphogear. Gear. Yeah. Oh uh, God, what's that one guy who plays uh, uh, Deku? He's good. Oh, Justin Briner. Yeah, he's apparently a good singer. Huh, I did not know that. There's like Johnny Young Bosch and Vic Mignogna who both also have music. Vic Mignogna does a whole bunch of plays and stuff like that, so he's he would be perfect. <laughs> oh wait, but it's all it's only girls that ever sing. Crap. Exactly. <laughs> all right, so we, Vic Mignogna's uh, Sinfo Gear, and it's just Kakarot. Well, there's a uh, Amalie who like she's done some voice acting, and she has all of her covers, so that could work. Oh yeah, yeah, she did that. Uh, one for uh, oh god, what was it? Uh, the one with the manga. Uh, Tokyo Ghoul. No, no, what? No, no, the what? Well, the one with the I cute, gonna... the cute cherry, red-haired girl. Comic girls. No, oh god. Nez, 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 Oh, Nez, Nez, monthly girl Nezumi song. Uh, monthly girls. Oh god, no, it's monthly girls Nozaki Kun. That's it. Yeah, I haven't seen it. That's a good show. It's a good show. All right, dub, so she dub is voice. really good. So now we just need to find five other good voice actor singer people. Ah, uh, yes. We have so currently we have Vic Mignona who's just gonna yell Kakarot. No, he'll be the commander who will get a song in the end. Oh yes, he's got to be the director. He's got to be, and he's just he's just once again just gonna do Kakarot. Just really angry. Or he's just going to be like, you know, Edward Elric. <laughs> or Tom McKean. Yeah. yeah. Or something, yeah. <laughs> One of them. I don't know, it doesn't matter. I don't care what he I, does. It's Vic Mignona. He's great. Exactly. He's best boy. Except for all the characters for Fruits Basket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, everyone, for watching. Hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we will be back next Sunday at around 8 o'clock Eastern to talk about Episode 2 and all the explosions that occur there. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.